Welcome back to the Man Cave. Today we have an exciting project. Years I've been waiting for this. I have a brand new DinoJet auto tuner that I'm going to add to my Power Commander on this 2015 GSX S 750. Now I have poked around inside this kit for a little bit, looked at stuff, instructions. It's pretty cool and it's very complete and it's really nice. Um, here's the auto tuner box itself. These wires connect up to power and um, uh, 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 ground. <laughs> think brain, think. This is a wide band O2 sensor. This is the connector that goes all the way to the power commander. Now what's cool about a wideband is that it has the ability to make very wide adjustments in your fuel curve. Whereas the factory one, a couple of things, the factory one's really slow. It, it samples, if you will, the exhaust less frequently than this one. And it has the ability to, to make smaller, larger, broader changes to your fuel. Whereas this one is like milliseconds quick and bam, 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 changing right on time, right when it needs to. Depending on that RPM, it's not using these kind of slow moving averages. It's using right now time to tune your fuel as it should be based on driving conditions and atmospheric conditions. Most importantly though, I got two new stickers. Dino Jet. Those will go on the wall. Little baggy comes with O2 sensor plug. This goes all the way up through the bike. It plugs into this. All these little wires go here and then that goes down to your O2 sensor. And then this plugs into your power commander. We got to figure it out. This is the plug. They gave us three straps to hold wires down, alcohol wipe, Velcro, and three little electrical connectors. And check this out. You know what that is? That's a little plug that seals up the holes, I think, on this. No. I'll figure it out when I get closer. Oh, and then there's this cool thing. This is actually the O2 sensor bung. And what this does, if you have an aftermarket exhaust and you don't have a place to mount an O2 sensor, you weld this in place, drill a hole, weld this in place, and mount the O2 sensor. Pretty cool. I have a stock exhaust system. I still have my catalytic converter and I never plan to remove it. Emission stuff, clean air, it's all important. But man, I got to admit, removing that catalytic converter really does make a big impact on the performance of your bike. But I don't recommend it. All right, so we're going to get started. I'm just going to organize this on my bench and we're going to plug it in. By the way, um, this is not the same as a dyno tune. Um, this is going to be excellent. This is basically an onboard dyno, but it's only adjusting fuel. It's not changing your timing, your ignition timing. It's not turning things on and off uh, on the bike. Um, like, I don't know if you make more advanced changes um, and start removing stuff. Uh, this is just fuel. And for me, who's a home hobbyist, I don't live anywhere near a dyno tuner. And I personally prefer to do my own work and I don't like to spend my money on uh, things I can do myself. May I get one or two more horsepower uh, by going to a tuner? Sure, but this is my bike and this is my work and this is my shop. I do everything I can on my own if I can. My dad used to tell me when I was growing up, I asked him, when was the first engine you rebuilt? And he said, oh, in my dad's car, I was 15 and he had never done it before and his dad had never done it before. So he went to the local library and found a manual and rebuilt an entire engine on his own. So his entire philosophy was, if I can read, I can do it. I can figure it out. And he did. So now we have YouTube, we got books, we got manuals, we got downloads. You can figure it out. For this, I need this very important tool. Now, if you look very closely, there's a port here this key goes into. And then I take my seat off. <laughs> All right. So this is where I put my power commander registration. I Velcroed it to my toolbox. 
Ta-da! There it is. You see how easy this is? There's a port. We plug this CAN cable into it. Done. <laughs> we plug it into this. Into the power commander. Click. Nice, solid connection. Look, we're almost done. Taking the seat off so I can access the battery because I'm going to use uh, the ground on the battery side for the ground on this. At least I think I am. So we got that opened up, but now I need to install the wideband O2 sensor. Remove the stock one. It's right here. Now they make specific O2 sockets for these. I don't think I have one that small. So maybe we'll just get a wrench on it and see if we can crank it out of there. Check this out. I do have giant O2 sensor sockets, but no, they're not. They're giant. So if you already have a power commander installed, then you have an O2 SIM running. I'm being lazy. I'm trying not to lift my tank. Now it's really tight through here where this wire has to run. There's the O2 wire. 17, 19 fits over it, but the 17 does not. Look at how frustrating. Wait, does it? Oh, just barely. Maybe. <laughs> Little tappy tappy, I did it! <laughs> yes! Oh, and it comes off easy. Must have anti-seize on it, right? Oh, that's perfect. Boy, I think it's finger loose already. Now the question is, can I get the wrench back off? Oh yeah. Come on! Done. Man, that came out nice and easy. I pray that the new one fits right in. Oh, and it looks bigger though. Look, the new one's a bigger diameter. Look, it's already got anti-seize compound on it. Oh, this does too. Oh no. It's not even close to the same size. Oh, we're screwed huge. So these are the same depth, same length. I thought this was going to thread right in. It doesn't. This thing's huge, huge. I got some welding to do. I did not expect this. Unless I can drill that out and re-tap it. Whole exhaust has to come off. So first of all, I'm gonna take this cover off. Now my plan is just to remove the radiator bolts and get it out of the way. Hopefully I don't take any hoses off. I shouldn't need to drain a radiator fluid. I should have enough play on these hoses to get it out of the way. And then I'm going to loosen up the entire exhaust system here, down here, some over here maybe, and drop the whole thing out. Once I got it out, I'm going to put this entire exhaust pipe on my drill press and we're going to tap out this hole from 12 millimeter to 18 millimeter. It should work, right? We're going to find out. All right, I'm just going to work really quick here. I'm gonna put some music on in the background. Alexa, play my soundtrack. Quick note. I got the radiator loose, but uh, I can take it all the way off, but then it's just free floating and then it's gonna be vulnerable to damage on the fender. So I'm gonna leave it hanging up here with these loose. I've got some movement, but you know what's sad? The hoses are holding it back from moving, which means I could take the hoses off, but then I got radiator fluid issue. So I'm just gonna see if I can keep this loose I think I have enough clearance with just this loose to remove the entire exhaust system. It's getting a little tight in there, so I'm switching to my standard six millimeter Allen wrench. This is called leverage. Oh yeah. <laughs> Minor enhancement.
Go to the other side. Now the big question will be, when I get everything loosened on the exhaust, will I have enough clearance to pull the entire exhaust out and down? Sometimes that goes in further than you think. We're gonna find out. You know, on some cars, the exhaust bolts on, uh, go into the head, into the coolant chamber. So you remove the bolt and the coolant comes flowing out. Hopefully that's not the design in this case. So a little tip, take the muffler piece off before you unbolt everything up here because you'll have more leverage, get that off, then this just drops off and you're done. All right, I'm gonna put a towel down to protect the exhaust from getting scratched up real bad. Hopefully it'll fit here. We will see. So. I want to get the alignment of the drill bit perfect. So I'm using this as a reference for what straight up and down looks like. I think that's as good as I'm going to get. I'm going to go for it. First of all, this is stainless steel. I'm drilling at 350 RPM. Slow is better for stainless steel. If you go too fast with the drill bit, spin it up fast, it gets hot and it dulls and it doesn't cut. You gotta go slow, especially with stainless steel. Slow spin, that's why I bought this because it has a three quarter horsepower motor and it turns slow and it has the power to move through that. This drill bit also has an edge on it so it fits really tight in the chuck. So it's a lot of torque. I hope this doesn't grab and twist. It's very intimidating. Taking a lot of metal. It's going quick. Ah. That's through. Okay, here's Big Fart. Welcome to Big Fart. Would you like me to fart? Yes. That was a wet one. Try asking me for a cheap wobbling fart. Or say random. Alexa, stop. <laughs>
Well, that's that. <laughs> we have a hole. Ooh. And it's threaded. Ready to receive. Let's go verify the 18 millimeter O2 sensor. Just check, check, check. Is it clean? Wow. Yes. <laughs> Good angle. Uh, everything. It's perfect. It looks like the stock one. Thank you, Lord. What a huge relief. That was very stressful. <laughs> I mean, if I mess that up, I'm going into weld and I only have a flex core welder. It would be ugly. All right. So the rest of this is easy. The rest of this is cake. What I'm going to do now is polish this thing up, make it look as nice as I can. It's off the bike. I have access. Get all the dirt, grime, make it shiny. Woo! So by the way, the drill and tap set that I bought, what, like 30 bucks, I think, worked flawlessly. And yet online, I saw a set specifically for this purpose to to blow out that hole to an 18 millimeter to tap it out for a larger O2 sensor, 350 bucks. This one worked just fine.